Welcome to Drone Law Pro Radio. Today we're going to be talking about the FAA Section 333 Conditions and Limitations. So just because you get permission from the FAA to fly your drone for business purposes doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. The FAA Section 333 exemption is going to contain a number of rules you need to live by. These conditions and limitations are going to help you fly safe and they are going to be one of the items that you need to pay very close attention to as you launch your commercial drone business. So what is a FAA Section 333 exemption for drone use? Well, it's the FAA telling you that you could fly your drone for business as long as you follow these rules. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the conditions and limitations that you would expect to see in your Section 333 uh, obtained by the FAA. Okay, so uh, some sample FAA 3 exemptions are going to be in addition to the FAA drone regulations, the federal aviation regulations that you also have to comply with. So You'll have to take a look at those Federal Aviation Regulations. Your licensed pilot will know what those are. And then in terms of the conditions and limitations which will be actually stated in your 333, you're going to see there are, ironically, 33 of those exemptions which you will typically find. Okay, And they are going to determine what your company needs to do in order to fly legal. So some of these conditions and limitations are going to be really important because your failure to comply with any of the conditions and limitations could result in a loss of your 333 exemption, put you out of business. So for instance, you're going to be, uh, your company name is going to be limited to certain SUAS that you have added in your exemption petition. So let's scroll on down here and take a look at number 26. All flight operations must be conducted at least 500 feet from all non-participating persons, vessels, vehicles, and structures unless you do certain things. So you're going to see that the 500 foot rule breaks down into two general categories. One, people, uh, what they call non-participating persons, and two, there are B, it is vessels, vehicles, and structures. So you can't be within 500 foot of any non-participating person or vessel, vehicle, or structure. Well, this makes things incredibly challenging if you happen to be flying in the real estate market where you're doing downtown real estate and there are neighbors uh, or you're doing um, downtown commercial properties where there are other buildings and people around. So let's break this down and take a closer look at, at this particular condition and limitation. So 500 feet, 500 feet is a long way. A basketball court is about 94 feet long and a city block, it can be anywhere between 200 and, and 400 feet. So you could be talking about non-participating persons, non-participating persons, vessels, vehicles, and structures within the entire block. And that's a big challenge. That is a big challenge. So the first, cha the first thing you need to be thinking about is how far is 500 feet. And it's a long way. Okay. So once you figure out who is within that 500 foot radius, uh, who are the people and who are the uh, people who own buildings, vehicles, cars, trucks, uh, any other type of structure or vessel if you happen to be doing some maritime work. Okay, and then you're going to figure out a strategy for complying in good faith with this 500 foot rule. So let's break this down. A non-participating person, vessel, vehicle, or structure. What does that mean? What does non-participating mean? Hmm. Well, it's a good question and it's the first question that you ought to be asking yourself. So the FAA does not provide any definitions of what a non-participating person is with any level of detail, but they do give us some examples. They say, number one, that a, a PIC, a pilot in command, is a participating person. They're part of your flight. A visual op observer, the VO, is part of your flight. They're participating. Anyone who's being trained is participating. But then they have this category called essential persons. Essential persons are also considered to be participating persons, and they can be within the 500-foot radius. 
What is an essential person? Well, it is undefined, but you can make the good faith argument for compliance purposes that it is any person who is instrumental to not only the operation, but the purpose of the flight. So if you're doing wedding photography, then everyone who's in the wedding and, and all the invitees of the wedding could be essential people to the flight, at least from a good faith compliance standpoint. So let's take another look at this and let's think about 500 feet and let's think about some of the um, unless provisions that we've got to deal with, okay? So you can't be within 500 feet, persons, vessels, vehicles, property, unless, and now we see these two categories again, A and B. And it breaks down into, okay, unless, and then you've got non-participating purpose unless people, unless provisions, and then vessels, vehicle, and structure unless provisions. Let's take a look at the non-participating people. They can be within 500 feet of your flight if there are barriers or structures that are present that provide sufficient protection from the people uh, who are non-participating. And what you're looking for here is protection from debris in the event of an accident. Okay? So as long as people are inside a building, then they certainly would be under a structure that is going to provide protection in case there's a problem with the drone and it falls out of the sky. So that's easy. Okay, if they're on the street, then they're not. But what if they're under a tree that provides sufficient protection so that if the drone fell out of the sky? vertically that they would not likely be hit. Well, you could make again a good faith compliance argument that that would be a barrier or structure that keeps that non-participating person safe. If someone who is non-participating, who's not a participant in your flight, wanders into the 500 foot zone of safety, then you need to do what is necessary to cease operations in a manner ensuring the safety of those persons. So that means essentially you need to bring your drone down or move it to a place away from the people who are non-participating. There's no exact correct answer here. You need to do what is safe for the person who isn't part of your flight operation. Always think safety first. That is the main point the FAA is trying to stress here. So, okay, so uh, let's now switch up here and talk about uh, being within 500 feet of a, a vehicle, a vessel, or structure. Here it's a different approach. It's not about making sure the person is under a, a structure that's going to provide them safety, but uh, about permission and, um, and risk of, of uh, some sort of hazard. So uh, here you can actually say, okay, well, I'm going to be within 500 feet of someone else's home or car, and I'm going to get permission from them. I'm going to determine, the pick is going to determine that the, it's a safe flight, that there's not undue risk, and that there's no undue hazard as a result of being within 500 feet of someone's car or house, what have you. So those are pretty low barriers. If there was a, a structure that was a power line or a power grid, or something else that was a higher risk, then you would have to uh, make a, a different assessment in terms of safety. So let's talk a little bit about granting permission. What is granting permission? Well, again, no definition from the FAA. From a legal standpoint, you could make a compliance argument that, uh, that you could provide notice to the neighbors and building, op uh, uh, building owners in the area. Tell them your contact information. Give them your uh, flight date, time, what it is you're doing. And if they don't object, that could constitute permission, or at least it'd give you an argument of permission. Obviously, if you're going to get signed and written permission, that's going to be a higher level of compliance and less subject to attack. So the 500-foot rule is, in fact, one of the most challenging conditions and limitations. The FAA is not looking to cite you for violations. They're not looking to investigate you. They want you to fly safe. That's the main thing. They want you to be educated about flight. You need to make a good faith effort to comply with this condition, with this limitation, and you're probably going to be okay. Uh, if you are a safe operator and you don't have safety incidents, then these types of provisions aren't likely to come back and haunt you. So that's all for uh, Drone Law Radio today and Section 333 Compliance. We'll see you next time.